You are listening to A Difference for One podcast, episode number 13. Bonus! I'm Michelle. I'm Nicole. I'm Sharice. And I'm Cammie. We are the English Sisters. We come together to share life-changing methods of improvement through a variety of topics. We hope that above all, these discussions will help you feel that Jesus Christ is making a difference for you, the one. And we also hope that our podcast will inspire you to find simple ways that you can make a difference for one. Hello, everyone. I wanted to get on here and do a quick bonus episode this week and let you know what our family has been doing over the last several months in replacement of our normal church attendance. As you all know, we have been in quarantine and not able to attend church services or any other sort of large gatherings. And so my family decided that we wanted to do a weekly devotional together. So each week my parents would assign um, a family to give a special musical number and they would ask two children, one teenager and two adults to speak. And we would start each of these meetings with an opening song and prayer and end with a closing song and prayer. And then after that, my dad would lead us in a Sunday school type discussion about the assigned um, scripture reading for that week. And we as a family really enjoyed being able to have some sort of a replacement for normal church services. And we also really felt the connection with each other and a stronger bond together as we would meet each week and be able to share our testimonies with each other and experiences that we have been having and really grow in our relationships with each other and with our Savior. And so I thought you might be interested in hearing how some of these testimonies went. I regret that I did not record all of the talks and testimonies that were given. Um, There were some that I was like, oh, this is really good. I need to hit record. And so you get a little snippet of um, something that was said. And um, I did ask the permission of everyone that is on this recording just to make sure that they were okay with it and felt comfortable with sharing these things. I apologize if the sound quality is not as good as you would normally expect, but I hope that you will still really enjoy these messages that they shared with our family. And so I hope that you enjoy these sweet testimonies that several of my family members share. Two of them are full talks that were given. And then at the very end, my sister Sharice shares a recording of a song that she sang called what have i done with his name the original song is by kenneth cope but she changed the words around a little bit to fit her she was named after my mom's mom leneve and so she changes the words to fit that And I know that this isn't what you would normally expect on a podcast to hear music but I think that you will find it um, very beautiful and in, I hope that you will enjoy the experience. And I want to add to these testimonies, my testimony that I know that it is so important to cultivate a relationship with Jesus Christ and to share your testimony of him with others. As your relationship grows and you accept him into your life, you take his name upon you. What will you do with his name? Will you use it to do good and make a change in this world? We need faithful followers of Jesus Christ more than ever. Don't be afraid to speak up for what you believe in. And I add my testimony that he lives and that he loves us. And no matter what we're going through in our lives, he accepts us fully and completely right where we're at. And we can turn to him whenever we need him. And he's there for us. And so now I will turn the recording over to the beautiful testimonies, and I hope you enjoy. Today, uh, I just want to bear my testimony about um, how great these Zoom meetings have been. We're actually going to be starting church next week at 11 uh, a.m. Central Time. 
So I don't know if we're going to be able to attend these, but it's been good. Um, I appreciate everyone uh, sharing their own personal testimonies. Uh, there have been portions of your testimonies every week that have touched my heart or they've helped me uh, like what, with what I was looking for uh, in the moment. Every time we meet, I just, I want to bear my testimony and let you know how I feel about Jesus Christ, how much I love him, and how much he has helped me through the things that I didn't even know I needed help, and how much he has brought joy into our lives by allowing each of you to be our best friends. And I mean all 65 of you to be our best friends that we get to journey with together. And I just feel so strongly that you need to know that, that if this were the last time that you heard me ever bear my testimony on this side of the veil, that you would know that he is my savior. I love him and I know that he lives. I often feel like he's already here not yet to come in his glory, but already here on the earth somewhere, starting to prepare for these last days to when he will come in his glory. And we just do what we're supposed to do where we are and do it. And he will protect us. He'll watch over us. He'll guide us. And when we're on the covenant path, it doesn't matter where we are. It's just that we're on that path. And we invite all to come and be on the path with us and fight the good fight against Satan. We have to know our adversary. We have to know his tactics. We don't have to dwell in it, but we need to know what tactics are out there that make it our vulnerabilities and our weaknesses such that he can strike at us in the tiniest little part of our armor that might not be strong. And it's how, how we strengthen each other in that and buoy each other up and through compassion and love carry on the cause of Christ through the Dawn and Joy English family. And then on and on through 10 generations will come during the millennium. 10 generations. And that's our greatest gift that God has given us a very rich heritage that we come through on both sides of the ancestry and where much is given much is expected and now is the time to stand and we will win when you get fear and you're afraid of what's ahead of us we know who comes out on top i just can't figure out why satan doesn't get it he's having fun right now but he's gonna go down and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Today, I was talking, talking to Nicole. And, um, you know, Nicole and I live like five minutes away, so barely getting to see each other. It's, it's really hard because I want to have a stronger, and better relationship with her. And so I made a phone call to her. And, you know, we're starting to work towards doing that. But it's everything that's happening right now and everything that's in my life, I couldn't, I couldn't trade it for. And uh, I still have my, my, my struggles from time to time, but I have a huge family that supports me. I got little kids that love me. And um, yeah, everything's, everything's good. And I, I'm glad that mom said something because I wanted to share with you guys so that you guys all knew where where I'm at and my family is. Um, so in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As we continually strive to live closer to the spirit, try to feel his will in our behalf, in our individual choices, that we'll be able to find peace and joy regardless of the things that happen, which is what Alma was all about. 
is is having joy. And he was constantly telling the people, repent so that you can have joy. And that message is the same for us today. I know that God lives and that he loves us and that he's watching over us, that Jesus is the Christ. And he has done so much for us. And, and we just, we don't know all the things that he's has done and will do for us to help us get back to father and to help us be what we ultimately need to become. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, growing up, I can only remember my mom being in a relationship with one man. He's the man that today that I still call dad. I don't actually remember a time when she was with my biological father for she had left him when I was only three. There were times that I didn't always get along with my stepdad, but I still loved him. There came a time in my life when I wanted to have a relationship with my biological father and with some hesitance from my mother, she allowed us to go and visit in Oklahoma. But year after year of going to visit our father, our relationship with him began to grow more and more unhealthy, for he was not a good man. And so for our safety, we stopped visiting and thus ended the relationship between us. My stepdad was a good man. He, was, he always made sure that we were taken care of. Um, he did drink alcohol and smoked cigarettes and listened to loud rock music. However, my friends all thought that he was the coolest dad, and I guess so did I. I pretty much was able to do anything that I wanted as a kid and throughout growing up. I hung out with kids who smoked cigarettes. I dropped out of school in the 10th grade, and I moved out of my parents to go live with a boyfriend of mine. Over the next six or seven years, I basically went and did anything I wanted, but a lot of those things led me to trouble with law enforcement, so it was now time to clean up my act and be an adult. Eventually, I would end up meeting Marcus. I would find out about the church and was introduced to his family. I remember I was so nervous because I was afraid that they would not like me. Sorry. Everything about my past and how I lived wasn't anything like the way Marcus described growing up. I realize now that there was a part of me that had always craved and always wanted what Marcus had with his parents and siblings. Over the last seven years, things have been great and things have been tough since being married to Marcus. I now have a relationship with Heavenly Father and with Jesus Christ. In preparing for this talk, I came across a talk by Stephen W. Owen called The Greatest Leaders or The Greatest Followers. In it, he said, then you will find that in the very act of following Christ, you are also leading others to him. For in the words of President Thomas S. Monson, as we follow that man of Galilee, even the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal influence will be felt for good wherever we are and whatever our calling. I realize now that all the relationships that I had growing up were with people who were following their own way or were following their parents' way before them. None of them were followers of the Lord. There were no family prayers. There was no talk of Heavenly Father or of His Son, Jesus Christ. There were no scripture studies and there was no church. For my family, that was what was normal. That is what they knew and that is what they taught me. I relate what Stephen W. Owen said in this talk to dad, Don. I know that he followed his father's and their father's way of living, which was to follow the Savior. I'm grateful to him for following the Savior and teaching his children the way that he was taught. I'm grateful for all of the times that we did come follow me at the house and grateful that Dad was always there to listen when I had questions about what certain scriptures were. By Dad teaching his children to also follow the Savior, he has been their leader. And in doing so, 
He has taught his children to be great leaders as well. I've talked to many of you, and I can't express enough how grateful I am to have you as my family. The love and advice and the knowledge that I have received about the Savior and about how I can live my life and turn to him motivates me to be a great mother, to help Marcus as my husband be an even greater father. When I look at my two boys and I think about how I was raised without Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ in my home, I am grateful to know that they will be raised differently. I can only hope and pray that they will be great fathers who descend from great followers such as their father and those fathers before them, and that one day they will be great leaders for their families as well. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I wanted to take advantage of this unique audience where all of us share the same ancestry and talk about our forefathers. Uh, lately, I've been feeling the strength that we get from the many people who've gone before us that have constantly prayed for their families. And that's just like us. We pray for our families. Those that come after us also receive those prayers. And I, I believe that with so many ancestors uh, that have been members of the church and those that have also not been members of the church but have had faith in God, uh, all those prayers uh, just accumulate. and. It's kind of like a protective bubble for us in this crazy life and world. The closest that I've ever felt to those that have paved the, paved the way for us was when we went to the Kimball family reunion in Nauvoo a couple of years, years ago, uh, probably like 15 actually. It was while I was in dental school and uh, we'd been there so many times before just through the years but that time was different uh, because we were celebrating the Kimball family. Um, I thought I would feel the strongest when we went into the Kimball home, but it was actually in the John Taylor home, and it was just overwhelming. Tarek and I both felt something there, and it, it just was overpowering and tangible. Uh, the only thing that I could find just over the years that had to do with our family and John Taylor was the following story about Alexander Williams. It said that at the most critical time in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, when the prophet Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram were murdered at Carthage, President John Taylor received four bullet wounds. He was carried away some distance to a hotel. Many of his friends called upon him, expressing their sympathy for him and their indignant feelings against the mob. In John Taylor's words, he said, Brother Alexander Williams called upon me, who suspected that they had some designs in keeping me there, and stated that he had, at a given point in some woods, 50 men. And if I would say the word, he would raise another 50 and fetch me out of there. I thanked him, but I told him I thought there was no need. End of quote. However, things became so intense that Brother Taylor was taken by friends to Nauvoo a few days after Brother Williams had called on him. That was just such a good example of one of our ancestors who was willing to fight for good. Uh, his son, Thomas Williams, was the most successful merchant when the saints first settled, started to settle the Utah Valley. He was only 30 years old. And that same year, uh, President Buchanan, it was 1857, uh, who was the President of the United States, was sending military troops to calm the Mormon rebellion. So Thomas Williams sold everything so that he could move his family east to get away from that. Um, but at the time, his 14-year-old daughter, Caroline, did not want to leave with her, she didn't want to leave her fiance, David Patton Kimball. And that is Grandpa Kimball's grandpa. Her dad forbade she stay with him and hired guards to watch her constantly until they could leave. David planned an escape for her. He sent four men on horses pulling a carriage to bring her to the courthouse where a judge was ready to marry them. And then he had two other friends on horses ready to take them straight to an island on the Salt Lake called the Antelope Island where they eloped. Love truly conquers all. A few years later, Thomas Williams returned with his family and was making a trip to bring back a wagon train of merchandise from California. And at 33 years old, he was killed in, in an attack by Native Americans. If you remember, David P. Kimball was one that was sent by David, or sorry, Brigham Young to help a company of handcart pioneers that were stranded near the Sweetwater River. He, along with two other men, carried people through the icy water to help them continue on their journey. That showed us bravery and obedience. And then many years later, David was making a freight run between Maricopa Railroad Station and Prescott when he was caught in a snowstorm near Prescott and contracted pneumonia. On the return trip, he began, became separated from his traveling companion and wagon 
and got lost in the Salt River Valley south of Wickenburg. He spent four days in the desert with no food or water. During this time, he reported seeing a vision in which his deceased father warned him to get his life in order and that he only had two years to live. He doubted Mormonism for over a decade. His traveling companion assembled a search party and they found him near present day surprise. He got back on track and a few years later, just like his father had said in his vision or, or dream, he died a few years later at 44 years old. There are so many stories that uh, we could relate. Uh, another one was Grandma Kimball's grandpa, Robert Martin. He uh, smoked a pipe every day, constantly. And one day after church, the word of wisdom was the subject. He went home, he put his pipe on the mantle and called grandmother's attention saying, mother, do you see that pipe? And when she said, yes, he said, I will never touch it again. And he never did. And when he died, the uh, pipe was still on the mantle as a remembrance. Um, we're just so blessed to have a rich history of men and also women that loved the Lord and stayed true to the gospel. I'm grateful for a dad that was there for fathers and sons, for Pinewood Derby, and for priesthood sessions of General Conference. I'm grateful for a father who taught me about the birds and the bees in the greenhouse with vegetable plants. He taught me something huge at a pivotal time when I was trying to decide what I wanted to do for a living. He said, we live in a time when you can have anything you want if you want it bad enough and are willing to work for it. And that is what pushed me to decide what I wanted and that I would work as hard as I had to to get there. Looking back over the years, the thing that I gleaned from dad is his unwavering dedication to the gospel. There was never a question about paying tithing or following the word of wisdom or keeping the Sabbath day holy. He is a true example of enduring to the end. Now going forward, we as dads need to evaluate our heritage that we are creating and leaving. Who are we now? And is that who we want to be remembered as? Um, I know that uh, this church is true. I'm so grateful for uh, the ancestry that we have, for the things that we can learn from them, and for the strength that we get from them, for uh, their prayers and for their constant guidance through our lives. And these things I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before, since there's a little bit of time before we sing the closing song, I, I want to pay tribute to all of you. It's such an awesome experience to have the priesthood on the earth to work for the Lord, to have a prophet and for it to be carried through these great men of the earth. The most important thing, though, is if you have the priesthood, is the responsibility to be righteous and clean and pure and do the best you can. When we talk about each of you as families, we're, our hearts are filled. I keep saying this every week, but it's true. There may be turmoil out in the world, but there's such joy and happiness when a family can turn to each other and feel the strength and love that we feel from each other because that's the world that we live in. Now, as your parents, we dearly love each of you. We want the very best for you. And we want you to know that if you don't do better than we did, then we have failed. My mom said that to me, and I feel the same way, that you are all doing great work, touching many lives. We have 11 children that live in eight states, and that is wonderful. So we are out in the Lord's vineyard, and he will watch over and protect us as we continue to follow Jesus Christ. Is it hard sometimes? Yeah. But I know there is a legion of family on the other side that is helping us through this. And I know that they want us to succeed. That someday to usher in the millennial reign and for Jesus Christ to be here on the earth is amazing. 
And I want you to know that I love the Lord. He didn't let me die, so I still got to live. You still have to put up with me. I'm finally well enough again that I can do the things that I did. I was, have not been able to do for over a year. One thing I want you to remember is that there's only two rules in our family that we had. One was be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and if that changes, call. And that's for safety reasons. And the other one is follow the prophet. Everything falls under those two rules. And it's such a joy to us to see how you are all raising such righteous children unto the Lord that can then carry on this great posterity. There will be 10 generations of this family during the millennium. And right now we're 67, 68 by the end of the year. And there is much that we have to be grateful for. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Mother named me after Grandma, said she hoped that I would one day be the woman that she was. Grandma died when I was six years old, so she hasn't been around to know what her namesake has done. No, what if she is watching? What if Grandma's seen all I've become? What have I done with her name? I'm hoping she won't be ashamed. The right or the wrong, I've done it all with her Someone named me after Mormon Tried to turn the world against me Because of faith etched in gold But that name has stood for goodness And its fame now floods the nations By the words Mormon wrote Now what if he's watching if I've been true to what Mormon made known, what have I done with his name? I'm hoping he won't be ashamed, the right or the wrong I've done.
If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. If it resonates with you, the greatest compliment you could give is to share it with a friend who might benefit from it as well. Check out A Difference for One on Instagram for additional content. And if you have any questions, comments, a topic you'd like to hear about, or if you'd be interested in a free mini coaching session, send an email to a difference for one at gmail.com.